Hey everybody, Game Makers released a new update for July, and it's a big one with a ton of really cool features in it, some quality of life, some new features that could save you a lot of time. So let's dive in and check this out. So when you load up Game Maker, you can download this update, and they've got a huge paragraph, or a couple paragraphs here, explaining what's going on. And what we're gonna do is run this down, and I'm gonna show you the things that I'm most excited about here. So. This just came out on the 30th of June. For me, it just released. So, first up, we've got licensing issues for single sign-on. Okay, good quality of life, not too important. This one here, though, is pretty useful. So, if you've been working in like a, with an old project, or you have old projects that you want to be able to bring into Game Maker, they now have a much better application. It's actually a new one that will be called when you're loading up importing or saving projects and it will upgrade or downgrade projects for you automatically it says here that pre-2020 projects so like three plus years ago and some specific 2.25 projects that had troubles before you can now bring in what that means is you should be able to bring in any old project in game maker that you've got into the Game Maker engine now, which is really exciting. The other really cool thing here is it will now be allowed to, when you save a project now, you can open it in future IDE re releases and future ones will be able to open older ones. So you'll be able to flip flop back and forth. It will ignore new assets and you can just go back and forth between them from this version onward. This I think is a huge deal because there are times when you want to try out a new feature with your project and you have to copy and paste it or have your GitHub repo back on a new thing and it's just a lot of work to try out a new feature in Game Maker. But now you can try out the new version. If it's great, awesome. If it doesn't work, you can just roll back to this old one and they'll be able to flip flop back and forth no problem. That's a really nice quality of life. Feather is now enabled by default. This, I think, should have happened a long time ago as Feather is a huge improvement in how you actually use Game Maker on a day-to-day -day basis. That's just, I don't know why that is, has not been enabled by default. Um, this right here, this create your own bug package report is really cool. So we can go in here and I've got a project I'm working on and let's say there's a bug inside of here. You can now go up to help and you can click on create your bug report package. And before, and I've done this a lot of times, when you, whenever you submitted a bug, you had to give them your project, go into your local files and find like two or three different uh, compile things. You also had to copy and paste the output from here into a text file and upload that. It was super tedious, not user friendly in the slightest. And now it's just basically two, three clicks now. You just click create a bug report, click yes, save it somewhere. And then that zip file is everything that you upload, which is just beautiful. This will make submitting bug reports a thousand times easier. I'm super techie and even I'm annoyed at how difficult it is to submit a bug report to YoYo. This is so useful and so needed like five years ago. So that's awesome. Um, changes to verifying preferences, command line paths. I don't use that at all, so I can't speak to it. Updated the live wallpaper template. I would love to hear if any of you have used the live wallpapers. I've seen that they exist and I want to try it out myself because I'm really curious. So they have updated them. So if you use them, check that out. There might be something useful there. Uh, spine collision values. Again, I've never used spine, but they're still updating it, which means people are using it. If you're one of them, let me know. I'd love to hear how you use it. Um, control SDF settings for a font in the font editor. So I haven't done much inside of here, but it sounds like they're really pushing and upgrading the font editor, which is awesome. Um, so added support for a struct shorthand. So I don't really know what this looks like yet. I'm going to kind of dive deeper into this, but you can basically use structs in an easier way here. So instead of having three lines of code to create it, you can just do something like this and it's a much shorter way of doing it, which I think is pretty cool. We'll see how well it works out. Um, 
might be something that you just start using and don't think about it ever again because it should have been there forever. And then for whatever reason, I it's not right here, but there's a huge new update to the debugger, which is what I want to show you. So let's dive in here. And now there's a new function called show debug overlay. And they've had things like this in the past, but it hasn't been that useful. And now when you just run your game, not even in debug mode. So if I come up here, this isn't even in debug mode. You have this whole new fancy, pretty overlay that's actually running inside of your game and you can check out all the stuff that's happening. So I don't quite fully understand this entire thing, but you can clearly see the FPS that's happening. You can see the history up to 30 seconds or all the way down to one second to see how your game is actually running. And you can check out each one of the things that's actually happening inside of your game, which is super cool. And along with this, you have a whole new slew of functions. So you have a debug event, so you can put this in and then you can actually trigger this when you want to see a debug event occur and you'll see it in that graph. And you actually can have a, you get back a struct sometimes when you're calling these events, depending on if you want a struct or you just want it to show in the debug overlay. And now you have an extended show debug message, which is kind of cool. And you've got the, you got a, so actually that's about it. So not a whole new slew, but a few that are really going to make things easier. So we have a whole new way of actually looking at the debugger while our game is running. And this isn't even in debug mode. So you just toggle this to be true. And then while you're playing your game, it's going to just display kind of what's happening. And you can kind of see if you are more intensive, like on the, drawing update you can see what's actually taking the resources for your game and i can see this being extremely helpful for someone who's later on inside of their game and looking to refactor and clean up their code to make the game run smoother this could be a huge time saver so for nothing else i would say this is worth the update right here this and probably the bug report like i know that that's like a back end thing but man I've reported probably over a dozen bugs to GameMaker, and I would have reported way more of them if it was simpler and easier to do. So honestly, that's a big deal to me. So what are you most excited about on this update? There's a lot here, and again, I really am excited to see what GameMaker is doing because they're really pushing more and more stuff, and they're really just making the engine better for both ease of use, but also new features, which is just fantastic. So let me know what you're most excited about, what features you're gonna be using, and what are you still wanting them to add to Game Maker? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. As always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.